What is up, you guys? I just woke up. According to my Casio MD watch, M MDV, I think this model is, um, according to this, I got a tiny little extra piercing acne. It is 10.01. So I just woke up like... 20 minutes ago. All right, so as you can see, well, as you can hear, I'm listening to some really relaxing music. Um, all right, so let's talk about the death penalty. I just opened my YouTube app on my Xbox Series X, um, and the first thing, the first video that was listed on my recommendations was, sorry, um, is the death penalty biblical? Well, without me taking the time to research that and going on Google and searching for verses in scripture about whether if the death penalty is justifiable to God or not, I, um, I'll just say, explain it here. Yes, it is justifiable to God. The death penalty is justice. Um, I, I don't know where in the Bible it's at. Um, but I do, however, believe that the death penalty is, uh, justice and God is a just judge. Um, and, um, it is justice that the people who commit heinous crimes like murder and everything, um, do get sentenced to death. It's justice because of their crimes. Um, I've actually heard before people have said that way back in the day. Um, well, just just look at it. Just so here's this. Um, uh, if you disobey God, you go to hell. Look what Adam and Eve did. Look at the world around us. That was caused by a simple act of disobedience to God. A simple act of d disobedience to God. He told them to not eat the forbidden fruit. Um, and they did. And as a result of disobeying God... It wasn't the fruit itself that caused the destruction and chaos and sin-filled world and corruption. It was their act of disobedience to the Lord that resulted in, it, in all that. Um, so just a little simple act of disobedience because of who God is. God is holy. He is just. He is perfect, righteous. So yes, one little simple act of disobedience to God is exceedingly sinful, exceedingly evil. That is why it's deserving for hell. But again, Jesus Christ, God sent Jesus Christ to earth so that he took upon our sins and all of our disobedience and everything to God um, upon himself on the cross. If we don't accept Jesus Christ's sacrifice for our sins, 
before it's too late. And let me tell you, a time is coming very soon, maybe within like the next 20 years, that it will be too late. And for the people today that aren't saved, it could be too late. They might not be here tomorrow. The Bible, the Bible says you're not guaranteed your next breath. You're not promised to tomorrow. Today, today is the day of salvation. Why would it say today is the day of salvation if that does not indicate that you could be dead tomorrow and be in hell for eternity? I'm just throwing that out there. But he died on the cross so that if we do take upon his, uh, not punishment, his sacrifice upon, uh, if we accept his sacrifice for our sins, if we say, okay, God, I accept your, um, I accept the, your free gift of eternal life. I, I admit, I decide today to admit I decide today, God, Lord, that I want Jesus in my life as my Lord and Savior. I admit that I am a sinner and I cannot save myself. I need a Savior. I believe with all my heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross 2,000 years ago to save me from my sins. I give my heart to him. I give my all to him. I receive him as my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you mean that with everything you've got, everything you have, you have to believe with 100% of your heart that it's true. You are saved. It's not the works that we do to earn salvation that save us because we cannot earn salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 through 9 states, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. It is by grace through faith that you have been saved. So you get saved only by God's grace, through God's grace, that you have the faith to believe in his sacrifice. And not of yourselves, for it is the gift of God, eternal life. So nobody can boast. Nobody can brag, saying, I'm better than you. I deserve to go to heaven. No. Um, You can't earn it. You can't deserve it. We can't earn God's love. We can't deserve God's love. It's just how it is. It's just who he is. He decided to love us so much, so very, 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 very long ago. Trillions of years before the first universe was even formed, even came into God's mind. He loved us. He knew us. He knew us eternity in the past. Eternity past, God knew us. Again, like endless countless billions and trillions and zillions of years before the first universe was created and let me tell you eternity past is a long time ago so there is probably like billions of different universes that god created that blew up created new ones through big bangs and and so on so on um But before the first universe that God created even came in his mind, out of billions and trillions of different universes that have existed, eternity in the past, I don't know that for sure, but if it is for sure, if it is true, then let me tell you, he knew about us, he loved us so much before those even came to his mind. So that's how much he loves us. So yes, death penalty is righteous it is just because of who god is why should we question that i mean let's see here um do you think just a hundred years of a life a person's lifetime deserves an eternity of hell well not hell hell is temporal but um on Judgment Day, hell and death. Death and hell will be cast into the lake of fire with the wicked and the devil and the demons. So, um, that's for eternity. Lake of fire is eternal. Um, 
do you think that it's just that it's deserving that only a hundred years or so of a person's sinful life deserves an eternity of punishment in the lake of fire? If you don't believe that, if you don't, well, I mean, I'm not going to judge you for not believing that, but it is true. Because, um, it's true because of who God is. Who have we sinned against? We have sinned against a holy, perfect, righteous, just God. It's not the person themselves that's punished in hell. It's the evilness inside them called sin that is punished in hell and the lake of fire. And our soul is eternal, meaning God created our souls to be invincible, to be eternal, everlasting, immortal. So our souls can never cease to exist. Our souls can never be destroyed. When it says, when it talks about being destroyed in hell or in the lake of fire, uh, everlasting destruction, that means that our souls are being destroyed, yes, but not completely destroyed to where they cease to exist. We're burning in hell. Our souls are burning in hell. Well, not ours, you know, the people who are unsaved, souls are burning in hell. Um, but who he is, is why it's deserving of eternity, separate from him. Because God is love, he is just and holy, and he wouldn't be any of those things if he didn't punish evil. God is a punisher of evil. He punishes evil. Um, he, he hates evil. He's, when I said he's a punisher of evil, I didn't mean <clears throat> to make you guys think that I, I said that God is evil. He's not. No, 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 no. Um, he, he punishes evil. Um, and he wouldn't do that. He wouldn't be righteous and judged just if he didn't punish evil. So our souls are immortal. If you're not saved, you will spend eternity in hell in the lake of fire. Um, <clears throat> and it's the sin that's attached, like cancer, to your soul. Sin grips itself to your soul. And it won't leave. It won't get off. Unless, of course, Jesus takes it off. And the only way for that to happen is for you to ask forgiveness for your sins, to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, to believe in his sacrifice, you know, to get saved, born again. That is the only way your sins are removed, are washed away by his blood. Other than that, it's, it grips to you like cancer. And there's different sins, too. Like sins... There's, di there's, more, there's sins that are worse than others, which indicate that there is, in fact, degrees of punishment in hell and the lake of fire. So if you like, it does, so depending on the sins of the flesh, like adultery, like fornication, you will be, I'm not trying to be really, I don't know what this for sure, but um, demons will most likely be sawing off your your genital genitalia um and it grows back on I, i'm not trying to sound really weird with that but it's maybe that's some kind of the torment that goes on in hell for fornication um and then other things like murder um, like what you did to a person, if, if somebody's a murderer and if, however they killed somebody, like if they sawed someone in half with a chainsaw, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, thank God I don't watch any of those horror, stupid horror movies anymore, then they will be sawed in half by demons. 
Um, you see what I'm saying? There's there's a verse in the Bible that says, "You sow, you reap what you sow." So whatever that that means, um, what you do, you get in return. It could be for good and bad. So you you reap what you sow in hell that you did on earth, um, and also you reap what you sow in heaven, what you did on earth. So, um, like there's different rewards and stuff in heaven, different levels of rewards, like greater, less greater, um, more, um, greater rewards in heaven, uh, different crowns, um, everything. Same with hell. There's different degrees of punishment, of torture, torment, pain levels too in hell. So I urge you guys to read Romans chapter 10, verse 9. It, um, I completely forgot what how that one went. Um, I'm just drawing a dud right now. Anyways, it's um, those who confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe it in their heart that God rose him from the dead, they shall be saved. So you have to do that. You have to confess Jesus as Lord, believe with all your heart that he is He is God and the Son of God. He rose again. And you have to uh, uh those who confess with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe in their heart that God rose from the dead, you, you shall be saved. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy.